Hello everybody and welcome to the Ozark Sports Report YouTube show. I'm here joined by the head football coach of the Mount Vernon Mountaineers coach, Tom Cox. And for today's show we're going to be doing a season recap with the head coach of the Mount Vernon Mountaineers coach, Tom Cox. Recapping their season, Mount Vernon went 12-2 with only two losses coming to Reed Spring and Cardinal Ritter out of St. Louis. Coach Cox, what was the main focus that you had going into this season with your team of the Mountain Vernon Mountaineers? Well, I think we go into every season with kind of a theme. Uh, last year, we uh, used climb higher. Uh, we had made strides with the program, and so we, we were able to take it to the state championship game this year. Our theme was Storm the Mountain, and uh, we felt like that we lost a lot of good players last year. We graduated 10 seniors that were all very, very good, but we felt like we had a good nucleus coming back and then a bunch of young guys that just had not gotten a chance to to perform. So I uh, wanted to make this uh, an attacking-type year for us, and our young guys came through. Our nucleus of guys uh, really stepped up, provided good leadership. But I think that that was our our main theme was to just uh, press hard, uh, start fast out of the gate. Even though we were an inexperienced team, I think overall, and for the most part, we did that. Definitely a good time to rebuild after losing ten seniors. Also, we want to talk about another thing is about wins. You guys had twelve wins. What was your most important win that you had in this 2018 football campaign? Wow, it's a great question. Um, I think that with us, the probably the most important win for us was the second Catholic game, which was the quarterfinals for us. We had the opportunity to play some really good football teams this year, and we were fortunate to come out on top in all of them except the Reed Spring game, the first one. We scored with 26 seconds to play in that ball game, and we went for two. We were down one, went for two, and we didn't make it. And so it just was a good resolve for us there. We were able to beat Catholic in a close game, 36-30, the first matchup. But when we got to that point, in that quarterfinal game, I really felt like our guys thought that that was the most important game of the year, that we needed to get past them. We had, we had beaten them in a close game. You know, the last three years, it's been unbelievable with the games that we've played against Springfield Catholic. They've all been within one score. And this year was no exception with the two times that we beat them. But coming away with the the 26-18 to 18 win in the quarterfinals, I felt like, was our most important win. Staying in the same subject with wins, what was your most exciting win that you had of this fall fall 2018 campaign throughout all those? Uh, that been, yeah, that probably was the first Catholic game. I've never been in a game like that before, Adam. It was uh, the craziest thing. We had a, a real struggle uh, early with Catholic, both offenses and stuff, and we ended up uh, getting the lead. We were up 20 to 10, and literally in the next like two minutes and 15 seconds, we were down 30 to 20. It was the craziest turnaround I've ever seen in a ball game uh, ever. They had they scored and uh, kicked off to us. We threw an interception. And uh, they won play and scored, got it back. We punted. We had like a six-yard punt, and they boom right back again. And it was crazy how the game flipped from us being kind of in in pretty much control up 20 to 10 to being down 30 to 10. And what was so crazy was our guys just never seemed to panic, and they just continued to play. We got it back, and we scored late on just a, a beautiful throw and catch from Zach Jones to Kelly Vaughn in kind of the corner of the end zone uh, on a wheel route. And we were able to uh, hang on, uh, get the late interception, and won the game 36-30. to But just an absolute crazy, exciting game uh, with Springfield Catholic. Definitely a big rivalry that 
Mount Vernon and Springfield Catholic. Springfield Catholic was actually a new member coming into the Big Eight. One of one of nine teams coming into the Big Eight, which was, I believe, Nevada, Reed Spring, Marshfield, Logan Rogersville, East Newton, Seneca, and we believe Carl Junction. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, yeah, uh, Seneca and East Newton were uh, members of the Big Eight early. What it was, um, we added Nevada to the West Division, and then they added the five remaining schools from the old COC small. So um, Carl Junction, you mentioned, they went to the COC large. But what we got was we got Catholic, we got Marshfield, we got Rogersville, uh, we got uh, Reed Spring, and we got Hollister. And so you added those uh Along with Mount Vernon, Aurora went from the original Big Eight with those other five COC small schools to make a seven-team East Division bracket. And then the remaining members of the original Big Eight plus Nevada formed the seven schools of the West Division bracket. And so it was just an exciting year for us in terms of playing a bunch of new schools. Now, some of those, we had been playing Catholic for a while, and we used to have a really good rivalry with them several years ago, back in the early 2000s, but we got away from playing them. Uh, scheduling just makes it tough sometimes to, to continue some of those. Then we had been playing Reed Spring also, and we had developed a good rivalry with those guys. So it was neat to play them in a conference format, but then it was really good to pick up teams like Marshfield and Hollister that we had, um, you know, hadn't played. We played Hollister one time, I think, before, and that was in the playoffs in 2016, maybe. Yeah, 2016. And then uh, to pick up and just get to play those guys that uh, we hadn't, hadn't seen. We had played Rogersville many years ago in a couple of games, and and so it was, it was good to kind of renew some of those old old matchups. All right, now going back into topic, we now move on from wins to losses. Only two losses that you guys had, which were Reed Spring and Cardinal Ritter out of St. Louis. First question about our losses. What was the most disappointing loss that you guys had during this season? Sure. Well, I think the Reed Spring loss was really a tough one for our guys. Uh, they, as I said, we have a good rivalry with Reed Spring, we've been playing them, and one of the, on a side note, uh, Coach Lance, Go Lance Gosh is the head coach at Reed Spring, and he actually uh, was one of my players at Webb City when I was the head coach over there, and so it's been kind of cool to, to match up against him now that he's a head coach, and he does a great job down there. And the other thing about Reed Spring, uh, Brian Moeller is the former head coach, and he's the current offensive coordinator. And he's a Mount Vernon guy. He played at Mount Vernon and uh, was really a good player. And so, you know, just all kinds of little backstories on, on stuff. And we love playing Reed Spring because we feel like we get better every time we play them because you just have to bring it every night. And so that game, especially the way we came back, put together a great drive in the last uh, minute and a half of the game, came back and scored and then went for two and didn't make it. I think that really made it a really, really tough game to lose uh, to those guys. Uh, it was a, a conference game. It was a game with Reed Spring. And then it was an important game for us in our district standings as well. Definitely didn't harm you guys for district standings when you guys lost to uh, Reed Spring. Staying in the same topic with losses, what was your most educational loss that you guys had throughout this football season? Well, I think that one was a, uh, a very educational loss. I think sometimes guys can, you know, when you win, you think you do things so well. I think uh, high school kids sometimes miss uh, the fact that it, just because you won the game, you probably played well. We had several games this year that uh, we won, but we didn't exactly execute very well. And we had a lot of close games this year. But in that Reed Spring game, I think by losing to them, it really made us take a look at ourselves 
uh, look and see what we did that we could have done better. And so from an educational standpoint, I think losing a lot of times will help you uh, propel you to uh, bigger and better things down the road. That's exactly what that loss did for us. We were determined not to, to let that happen again. And we didn't until we ran into a, a very, very good Cardinal Ritter team. Also, another question that we want to ask is um, that you, you've played some schools out of St. Louis. You played Cardinal Ritter, which we believe is the only one that you guys played out of St. Louis. What's the difference between high school football down here in southwest Missouri as opposed to high school football in the St. Louis area? Well, I think uh, it's more, for me, I, I played high school football in St. Louis as well. And there are some outstanding teams up there. There are some teams that are not very strong up there as well. So I think the difference is that a lot of times in in some of these outlying areas, you're going to see more power-type football, more run-oriented uh, what we saw from Cardinal Ritter was the same thing that you see from you know a lot of schools, and that was wide open, spread offense, uh, very very good athletes. I mean that team was loaded with Division One players, and we see a lot of speed, we see a lot of power, you know a lot of big kids, but we don't normally see the number of kids that can run like that or the number of kids that can, um, you know, get up to the line of scrimmage that are 330 pounds and 6'3 or 6'4. And I think with this particular football team, that's what we saw. They had a great combination of size and speed. But the other thing that they had was they had ability. I mean, there's no question about it. You don't take anything away from those guys. They could play. And I felt like they were very well coached. Brandon Gregory is their coach. He did a good job with that. But as far as overall difference, I think um, we're, we play a pretty good brand of football down here. And uh, I wouldn't say that uh, there's a lot of a lot of difference. This year was the first time since I think – 2001 that Southwest Missouri was not represented in the state championship bracket in any of the classes. So that tells you how good a football Southwest Missouri plays. and But that also tells you just how good the football was coming out of the St. Louis area this year. They won it in class three. They won it in class four. They won it in class five. And they won it in class six. And uh, Lathrop, which is, I mean, northeast of Kansas City, won it in Class 2. And then you had a, you know, wasn't a St. Louis or a Kansas City school that won Class 1. So a lot of good football in the state and a lot of great football players in the state of Missouri as well. Also another topic that we just, that we heard about, that was during the state semifinal game at Malvern, you guys were playing Cardinal Ritter. One of your running backs, it was uh, Will Boswell, who I believe broke the record for the amount of tackles in a game. Is that correct? He did not break it in the, the, a game. What he did was he set the, the all-time tackle record for all classes for a career in the state of Missouri. And, so, and then last year, he finished second uh, for tackles in a season. So his final tackle total was 628 tackles for a career that spanned from 2015 through 2018. What's crazy about that is that he only had 13 tackles as a freshman. So in um, those last three years of play, he started his sophomore, junior, and senior years and he had a fantastic career last year. He had um, 249 tackles and in one season, and that was just a, an amazing total. This year he had 164, I think. Not quite as many, but the difference was is that we had a lot of other good players on defense, 
and we were able to get off the field a lot more this year. Even though we went to the championship game last year, we played overall better defense this year and just didn't have as many opportunities for him to make tackles because, number one, we had other guys that could make those plays, and number two, he just wasn't on the field for as many uh, defensive plays as he had been in the past. But just a fantastic player on both sides of the ball. And that might have been another factor for him is that he played a running back for us this year, which he only played defense last year, and just got a few carries or you know, blocked on, deep, on offense for our running back, Sammy Robinson, last year. But this year he rushed for 1,567 yards and 21 touchdowns on the ground. And then he had another oh, almost 300 yards receiving. So he, he had just a great year on both sides of the ball. Another thing we want to ask is, uh, does uh, Boswell have any, any plans of going to play football collegiately? Like, say, if he's going to play at the Division One level, the Division Two level, is he going to go to JUCO, or what's he going to do? He uh, just committed this week to Northwest Missouri State, the Bearcats up there and in Maryville. And so uh, we're really looking forward to him having a great career up there. Also, another college standout was uh, one kid from Cardinal Ritter who actually was going to be committed to Ohio State. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Was he, he was on offense and he was a uh, wide receiver, wasn't that right? Yes. Uh, Jameson Williams, uh, he is uh, just an incredible talent. He's got a good combination of size. He's 6'2". He's a little bit light right now. They list him at 175 pounds, but he can fly. I mean, he's like a 4'3", 40-yard uh, dash kid in great, great hands and really got a good instinct for the ball, good ball skills. It's not just that he can run fast, but he can actually play. So he's going to Ohio State. They've got several other kids on there that have committed to to other Division One schools as well. They, uh, his brother, well, played free safety for him, and he's, I believe, committed to Central Michigan. You've got the quarterback for them that um, is like six two one ninety, and Missouri is trying really hard to get him to come, but he's only a junior. But he threw like 51 touchdown passes this year and only had three interceptions going into that state championship game. And so it's just a, a fantastic year, really a good player. You got a good sense of where the ball needs to be, and you can tell that he makes great decisions by only throwing three interceptions going into that state championship. Also, another thing we want to talk about is on the Ozark Sports Report Twitter page, you're in the running for the Ozark Sports Report Coach of the Year. We believe you're in the running against Steve Ari from West Plains, uh, John Rodrigue from Web City, yes, Lance Parnell from Cassville, and John Gotti from Carthage. What would your words be to all those coaches and for yourself that's going to be competing against some of the best football coaches here in the Ozarks? Well, I'm totally humbled to even be mentioning that same breath with those guys i tell you i've got i know all of them and have just a tremendous respect for them i mean john roderick has just done an unbelievable job um, 11 state championships that he's won personally i think web city has 14 now and then coach guide has been in the semifinals uh, three of the last four years at carthage there just done a fantastic job and there and then you've got Coach Parnell, Lance, uh, he and I are, are, are good friends at Cassville. They went 12-0 and in the regular season, broke Lamar's 58-9 or nine game winning streak. We had the good fortune to play them in the district championship and beat them. Like I said about Reed Spring, we know if we ever beat Cassville that we have done something special and that we must have a pretty good football team. And so I was really, really proud of that victory as well this year. Our guys um, were determined to play well against them, and uh, we did. Uh, they turned it over, which is uncharacteristic of them. But um, 
Yeah, I, I think Coach Parnell does a, a fantastic job down there. And then Steve Airy at West Plains, that guy has won everywhere he's been and uh, really had a great year this year as well. So just to be mentioned with those guys, I, I'm super proud to be in there uh, because those are some really, really good football coaches that I respect a lot. Now going up out of the 2018 fall season now into the 2019 fall season, which kicks off in August, what are you going to be preparing for that's going to be coming up in the next football season come August of 2019? Sure. Well, if you look at our uh, the guys that we have coming back, now we return, as I said, a good nucleus. Our quarterback, Zach Jones, is back. We have Carson Bowman back, who is, will be a senior. He um, played a slot receiver for us and also played some a tailback when we gave Boswell some time off. And uh, he had like 66 carries for almost 400 yards this year. So as a team, we almost well, we rushed for over 2,000 yards, and then we Zach Jones, our quarterback, threw for over 2,400 yards. So that's a nice nucleus there. Plus we have our receivers coming back. Kale Miller on the outside is a big uh, kid, 6'3", 190. We also have on the other side, Rafe Darter is coming back. He started as a sophomore and had 40 catches. And then we have some other kids that can step in that played uh, wide receiver for us also this year. So our skill position guys are back. We lose a big, big chunk in the middle of our offensive line. Luke McKenzie was our center. He made uh, first team all state this year as a center. And he's going to be going to Southwest Baptist University and playing. And we're really going to miss him. But then returning our offensive line in the semifinal game, we started three sophomores and a junior along with Luke McKenzie. Tony Perry is back at the right tackle position. And then we have those three sophomores that started. Uh, You have uh, Josh Kerr. We have Zach Bray. We have Jacob Montemayor. We also have Gavin Gann who started some games. We have David Teal. We've got a lot of young guys that uh, are really going to be battling for those offensive line spots and and on the defensive side as well. So a good nucleus coming back on offense and the same on defense. We lose both corners, Patrick Lester and Justin Maples, did a great job on the outside for us. But we return both safeties, Tristan Shipman and Jagan Prescott. And Jagan was um, an all-conference player. Uh, so was Tristan, and Tristan made third-team All-State at strong safety. And then we return. Uh, Kale Miller also plays outside linebacker. We, we return Justin Moore. We uh, lose another senior, Waylon Ratcliffe, at linebacker, and a couple of other guys up front. But good nucleus of, of returners. And then a bunch of young guys that are hungry that want to step in. So we feel good about it, you know, right now. But as you know, Adam, the important thing at this point is how do these guys work in the off season? How do they do in the weight room? How do they do on the on the track? How do they um, gel together as a football team? You never quite know. But we feel like we have a good plan at Mount Vernon with our off season program and then our summer program. We do seven on seven in a league at Monette. And then we also uh, play in the Parkview 7-on-7 tournament. And we play in, this last year, we played in the Joplin 7-on-7 tournament. And we won that thing. We beat Joplin in the championship game. So, you know, we felt like we had a good good passing game uh, going in. We competed well with Carthage at Monette and at uh, the Parkview tournament. And so... We knew Carthage was going to be good. We knew Joplin was going to be good. And so we felt like um, we were going to be uh, pretty good as well if we could get our running game going. So we're excited about it. I think it's um, it's a lot of work ahead. You know, it's just and nowadays with Southwest Missouri football, there's just basically no time off. We took a week and a half off after getting our equipment and stuff turned in, and we've started – are, you know, lifting again, and it's crazy just to think that in the last two years we've played 29 games, and that has made all the difference in the world for us. Because if you get 
five extra games last year. That's five extra weeks of practice for our young guys. We got four extra weeks this year, four extra games, four extra uh, weeks of practice that are really invaluable for those young kids. And it really, they see what it takes to get to that level. So we're just going to try to keep that going. It's just hard as it can be, especially at a school like Mount Vernon where your numbers fluctuate with different size classes and and uh, different size uh, kids that play in those classes. So we have a lot of work to do, but we certainly feel good about uh, where we are right now and where we want to go. Staying in the same boat with the upcoming 2019 season that will kick off in August, what do you expect coming out of the Big 8 conference out of all the teams that are in the Big 8, which are, of course, Aurora, Mount Vernon, Cassville, sure. Monette, Lamar, and then all the newcomers that are going to be now in their sophomore seasons with the Big 8 conference? What do you expect out of the Big 8 conference? Okay. Well, I always expect um, great things from the Big 8. The Big 8 has had somebody in the semifinals at least, I mean, for the last 10 years in a row or whatever, and then you've got some team in the finals that um, forever. I mean, with Lamar's run that they had. So you know the Big 8 is going to produce good football. With the new alignment in the conference, what we do is we'll play those other uh, Aurora and those other uh, five guys from the old CLC that we talked about earlier. Our crossover games are we open up the season with Monette. Monette won the state championship uh, now it'd be, I guess, three years ago in uh, 2016. And so they are coming back. They played a lot of young kids last year. So I expect them to be very good again. We then play Nevada. Nevada, who dropped down from class four into class three this year. So they are always big and physical, and they're really a run heavy team with Coach Beachler up there. So. We have to be prepared right off the bat. And then our other crossover game is Seneca. Gosh, Seneca is always so good. So those three kind of non-division games are all going to be very difficult. And I really think on the other side, you know Reed Spring is always going to be good. You know Springfield Catholic is going to be tough. But now you've got Marshfield. Uh, we barely beat them 14-12. to 12 in a torrential downpour this year. Coach Bull has done a fantastic job over there, and they have a sophomore class this year, going to be juniors next year, that are going to be really, really tough. They're very, very good. And so I, I suspect they will be the favorite on that east side. And then you have uh, Rogersville. I thought Coach Talbert did a great job. We barely beat them as well. We beat them 20-14 to 14 in a really hard-fought game. And then you have Hollister, who Coach Atkins came over from Mountain Grove last year and did a wonderful job in that game as well. So it was a um, it was a tough, tough conference all the way around. I mean, from top to bottom, and that's what I love about it. There are no weeks off in the Big Eight. You just have to line up and you have to play because then you know that if you get out of that conference schedule, you get into that district schedule, you're going to be prepared for the postseason. And I think that's what's really helped us the last few years is that all these teams that we played, you know, they get us ready for that second season. And it allows us to, to get better and better and better because we're playing good competition. So on the other side, I mean, Castile uh, is, is always going to be good over there. Lamar, you know, they're, they're going to be back. I mean, it's a terrible year, and they got beaten in the semifinals. So it's just like the sky is falling over there, and the rest of us would love to have something like that. So they do a, a great job up there. They have bought into Coach Bailey's system and just a lot of good – a lot of good football all the way around. I, I love the conference that we're in, and I love playing football in southwest Missouri, the Big 8. All right, one more question before we let you guys go. If you have any final words to say to all the coaches that you guys played this year and also the two coaches that you lost to from Reed Spring and Cardinal Ritter, what would your final words be to all the coaches that you played, all 14 coaches that you played, including the ones that you lost to of 
Reed Spring, and Cardinal Ritter? Sure. Well, the thing that I would say to these coaches down here, and you talk to anybody down here, well, I think we have the best bunch of guys down here. And I would just, I, I think all of us have great respect for each other. We, um, you know, in the past sometimes in some of the places I've coached, coaches didn't get along. You know, the coaches didn't, you know, like each other or whatever. All of these guys, everybody is in this together. And, you know, we're in it for the kids. We're in it to try to put the best product we can out there. And I would just uh, tell these guys that, you know, thank you for the good job that that you do. And that's why the one thing, our, our kids that are going to be seniors next year, they have not had a losing season. Uh, their freshman year, we were 7-5, and five, and we lost to Monette in the district championship. And Monette went on and won the state championship. And then a year ago, we lost in the state championship. We were 10-5. and five. And then this year we were 12 and two. And so what we try to tell our kids and coach Johnston, our defensive coordinator is constantly harping on them is to appreciate every single win. Uh, it doesn't matter who it's over or, you know, how we get it. You have to enjoy these wins because they are so hard to come by because you don't get to out coach anybody anymore. All of these guys can coach, and um, it's you have to bring your A game. And so I would say to these coaches, great job. I love playing against you because you make us better. Um, but I, the preparation that you have and the schemes that you have and the work ethic that your kids have, it makes all of us better. It makes Southwest Missouri football better. And it gives us a better opportunity to compete against the, the Ritters or the Trinities or the Maryvilles or the Owensvilles or the, you know, Odessa, whoever it is in class three. We certainly have a chance against them because we have played against you. And uh, so that would be my message to them. Just keep up the good work and keep making us all better. All right, that's going to wrap up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our show. We hope you enjoyed us sitting down with the head coach of the Mount Vernon Mountaineers football team, Coach Tom Cox. If you want to stay connected with them through their social media, be sure to like them on Facebook. Also follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is at MVHS for Mount Vernon High School. Once again, that's MVHS on Twitter. Also check out their website. Their website is at mountvernon.k12.mo.us. If you want to stay connected with us through our social media, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website. Our website is ozarksportsreport.website.com slash ozarksportsreport. One final time, I'm Adam Smith saying, have a good day, everybody.